are on our way from wintry Germany and from stormy Faroe Islands to the summer and fly fishing for sea trout on beautiful Falklands. We had a fantastic short stay at historic Cotswolds before taking the air bridge of the Royal Air Force to Mount Pleasant Airport. First stop was the Tranquil Stanley with its very interesting sightseeing spots. Very close to Stanley is the Murray Farm with its endless seashores and great opportunities for sport fishing. All those fish were caught by us there in one windy but very joyful afternoon. The frying pan is a popular fishing spot and not only because it is close to the Mount Pleasant Air Base. We went to the mouth of the frying pan with Adrian Lowe, owner of the Murrell Farm and a highly recommended guide. It is fascinating to see the fish, sea trout and mullets moving in with the tides from the open sea to the estuary. Every sport fisherman is recommended to follow the Stanley Town Anglers along the country road to their favorite Pedro. The waters can be easily reached by car from Stanley in about 60 minutes and the journey includes a wonderful sightseeing tour through all of East Falkland's scenic attractions. The banks where you can fish are easy to access and are convenient for casting in all possible wind directions. It did not take long until Eddie, my fishing partner, had his first petrofish on.
And I hooked a very big fish with a small dry fly. Unfortunately, it went off after a long fight. The net was not helpful in this case and has frightened the fish. Normally, and unless a seal is trying to compete with us for the fish, you can observe how the sea trout come in groups from the open sea and get closer and closer to the culverts. With the lovely support of the local fly fisher, I was landing this wonderful Petro sea trout. I practice a hundred percent catch and release and am always very touched by seeing the fish returning into their habitat. It should not be too dry when fishing at the San Carlos River because you need a certain water level for good fishing. There's easy parking by the bridge. The river lies to the west of East Falkland and is one of the longer rivers with countless winding bends. At its mouth it flows into the idyllic San Carlos Bay. The record fish of the past decades was caught here by the wife of an army member, a sea trout of 22 pounds. It's a beautiful day today, windy, but it's okay. Best fly was a wet fly with a silver body. Eddie had already caught six fish and I had three. We are on our way to the race point farm and it is like always a pleasure driving with our SUV across Falkland's beautiful landscape. No defender is old enough to get rid of. They have been and still are precious companions. We have heard so many good things about the race point farm and its owners and can only confirm this after our stay. Port San Carlos Bay is the holy gate to the San Carlos River. Every large and small water dweller who wants to pass by there hangs around in the 15 kilometer long bay. At its shore there is a ruin of the former domicile of the Black Lake couple. Mr. Blackley was a shepherd and gaucho in the 19th century and had two beautiful daughters who were adored by every local lad. The trout court is wonderfully located at Port Sussex Bay and has an angler's paradise at its doorstep. It can be reached either via a track directly on the beach or a little further north via an off-road connection that is easy to drive. Huge mussel beds are exposed during low tide and are almost completely covered again during high tide. At low tide, when the tide just begins to come in again, fish concentrate on a canal between the mussel beds and the angler can catch a beautiful sea trout with every cast.
At this location you can't help but to enjoy this endless paradise and to watch jumping fish and wildlife with a glass of wine or beer in your hand and to test your culinary skills with local specialities like we did. fishing spot on East Falkland. The Bodhi Creek is located on Lafonia, which is a rather flat and sparsely populated peninsula in the south of East Falkland. You are passing Darwin and Goose Green with its memorials of the Falkland War. And not far away at the New Haven ferry terminal there's a Chintu penguin colony that can be carefully watched. Also here at the Bodhi Creek it is best to fish when there has been rain and the water level has risen. For most tourists, the major point of attraction is the area around the 200 close by islands. As an angler, you will most probably stay on East or West Falkland only. But at Volunteer Point on East Falkland, you can visit with a guide a king penguin colony, which is deeply impressing to see. We are here on board of Concordia, the ferry from East to West Falkland. The crossing takes about one hour and we are very much looking forward to our fishing on West Falkland with its beautiful rivers and big fish. The West is the best. Going back home, back to your fish fry. The picturesque village of Port Howard is the gateway to the west. When we arrived, there was sheep sharing ongoing, a very busy time for everyone on the Falklands. Sheep are the major income on the countryside and the quality of Falkland sheep wool is amongst the best worldwide. The Port Howard Lodge is the place to stay on West Falkland and is in the ambiente of historic fly fishing tradition and has even a little war museum. 
Sue and Wayne are fantastic hosts and offer delicious meals and guiding. The Vara River, with its tributary Green Hill Stream, is not far away from Port Howard and is named after the Vara, the only meanwhile extinct land mammal of the Falklands. Ensure to hire a guide, he will bring you safely to the river banks and tell you a lot about the camp and its history. It's a real pleasure to fish the Vara. You can wade along the bank very safely and comfortably and fish the opposite side with long casts. is one of the top rivers in the Falklands and highly valued by anglers. Most anglers prefer to fish around Mrs. Mac's pool and like all waters of the Falkland Islands the Chartre is wonderfully open and easy to walk. But here again you should be able to cast long casts to the other river bank and best fishing is after sufficient rainfall. especially to that of West Falkland. White landscapes, gentle mountain ranging in all facets of green and crossed by clear rivers. We are on our way to Roy Cove, where we will be staying at Crooked Inlet in the self-catering lodge of Natalie and Chris. This place is perfectly located to go on daily fishing trips in the west and northwest of Westfalkland. Today we would like to fish at the Herbert Stream, which belongs to the land of the Crooked Inlet Farm. The Herbert Stream has a unique charm floating through a narrow valley that is covered with herbs, grasses and berries. But on this day we were more in the mood of a relaxed summer holiday and we were just enjoying the sun and took it easy. opening now a new chapter of our story about sport fishing on the Falklands, fly fishing at the Byron Sound. Fishing there is so exceptionally good that you sometimes can't believe that such places still exist. The land is owned by the Nightingale family and you have to get their permission before starting to fish. On 
On the Falklands, you always have to ask the landowner if you are allowed to fish on his land. But before, a little bit of history. The Byron Sound was named after and by Admiral Lord Byron, who took possession of the Falklands for the British Crown in 1765. The busy globetrotter, or foul weather check as he was called as a subtle hint to his bad luck with stormy weather, was also the grandfather of the famous poet Lord Byron. The whole fishing fun did not start altogether before a bridge was built over the bay, including the culverts. basin that would generate a good exchange between high and low tide, but still allows such a high water level during low tide that the fish like to stay in it. beautiful river, the Blackburn River, feeds the sound, which is also of great importance for the reproduction of the sea trout and the reason for them staying here. On our first day fishing, we hardly couldn't believe what's going on. Eddie and me caught 70 fish all together. Two of them over 10 pounds. Next day fishing at the Sound was again unbelievable and we had the feeling, no, we were aware of being in the fly fishing paradise.
Eddie grew up on the Faroe Islands and is fishing since he was a little boy. He knows how to grab and land a fish safely without a net and I was more than one time thankful for his support. Day three for us at the Sound and getting our rods ready for today. While Eddie is using one rod only, I am using three different setups. This time I was having a so-called mullet on. Those fish are no mullets, but arctic fish. It has quite a prehistoric appearance, a very leathery skin with rough scales. It can grow over a meter and reach the age of 10 years. They are bottom feeder, eat crustaceans and are highly valued for their meat. This fish, of course, was allowed to swim away again. Trout did not exist on the Falklands until the 1950s. After a few attempts of stocking different species, the brown trout established itself successfully and this is not less than the proof that a sea trout is a sea-run brown trout. about flies that can be used when fly fishing on the Falklands. As we all know, the range of flies is huge, from dries to wet to nymphs, from small to big predator tube flies, single, double, trebles. Sea trout on the Falklands are not very selective. And so you should use the flies you normally fish with. But here is what we were using. We fished with very simple trout flies, that means mostly wet flies, size 8 to 12, and with single hooks, preferably with bronze finish. Mm. 
At the sound, you normally park your car by the shore and wade through the small flooded area to the little island. Most anglers are fishing then in the canal between the bridge and the pond. Day six fly fishing at the Sound was again one of those unforgettable days. Eddie and me have caught all together 55 sea trout in one day, two of them over 10 pounds. Although there was almost no wind in the morning, the fish were taking dry flies like hell and attacking them without hesitation. One fish was so heavy that he has bent the hook of Eddie's dry fly and went off. Later during the day the wind was increasing and we switched over to wet flies again. We recognized that the water level of low and high tide was rising due to the moon constellation. Had a strong impact to the fish and more and bigger sea trout were hanging around. It is really not possible to show in a footage all those beautiful fish we have caught and to do justice to them. Here at this place on the Falkland Islands you can see and be part of an untouched and unspoiled nature. Comparable habitat can hardly be found anywhere else in the world. Mankind is destroying nature with overfishing, pollution, invasive species and diseases and last but not least fish farms that are wiping out in just a few years whole stocks of wild fish. Big corporations are trying to establish salmon production and fish farms and cages on the Falkland Islands as well. We have to be fully aware of our responsibility when we are so privileged to fish at such a place and treat it with full respect and pay homage to all those wonderful sea trout. Two, 
When we started fishing on our seventh day at the Sound, the little island was almost covered with water during high tide. We landed eight fish that day and again two over ten pound. When you are looking for an accommodation close by the sound, you should stay in Hill Cove at Peter Nightingale's place. He's renting out a tiny house, the Boxwood Pot, which offers a real luxury glamping. Very close to the Boxwood House is an island covered with Tussac grass, the plant which was widely spread on the Falklands before. This grass is an important shelter for all kind of birds and you are entertained with a concert by them during evenings and early mornings. On day 8 and 9 we did not fish alone at the sound. Two fly fisher who normally are at the big Patagonian rivers were fishing there as well. The area at the sound where fishing is the best is not very long. It concentrates on the canal and the pond only and if there are too many anglers you are blocking yourself. So we went to the other river bank and were doing some underwater footage. As you can see in the film clip, the water is rather clear. Quite often the waters around the Falklands are colored by peat, but here at the sound there's just a bit of sediment. Our final fishing day at the Sound. We fish during all kind of weather, but today are very strong winds from west blowing with 0.47. 7 
The water level is still very high during high tide due to a super new moon constellation. Normally you can stick here as a fly fisher to a floating line with a fluorocarbon or a nylon leader. But I wanted to go deeper with my fly and switched over to a heavier setup. That was the key to the really big fish. My choice was the short double hand rod, weight number 9 with a scugget line float intermediate sink 3. So I could cast without any problems across the wind and could use a short fast sinking tube fly. While Eddie was giving up later on because he could not reach the fish with his floating setup, I landed that day my heaviest fish. From the 10 sea trout I have caught on this last day were 3 between 12 and 15 pounds. Here are some numbers. During our 10 days fishing at the Sound, we landed 206 sea trout 17 of them were over 10 pound. All catch and release, except one for us for a nice dinner, and a few for Peter to say thank you. Now I would like to say Auf Wiedersehen and finish with a quote by Henry David Thoreau. All good things are wild and free. Thank you.